Eskaroth, Leak Town, was the haven of our people after Smorg burned Dale and took the Lonely Mountain. Our kings fell to ruin much like Gondor's heirs, and the master of Leak Town was our ruler. But Bard I, the Dragon Slayer, the Archer, kept in his veins royal blood, and the kingdom was restored to us. We have just started to repair that which was lost and to expand. Our people number many and once more, and our friends have brought much help to us. It is now in our power to restore the glory, honour, and wealth that we once had. We need to focus to keep our society well, safe, with laws, and living with good intention towards ourselves and others. We live by a code of the ancients, to a code of faith and honour, where wealth is not governed by base instinct. Otherwise, we are as lost as the Easterners are in their service of Mordor. The river running, the Silver Kelduin, is our lifeblood. The very thing that makes Dale and its lands what they are. The dwarves do not bear water well, and the wines for King Thranduil must be hefted up river from distant Orwinian. It places us in a position to benefit all, and we gather our military might from the wealth and bounty the river gives us. Armed and armoured by dwarven smiths, we are marching, drilling, and honing our troops for the coming storm. The wealth we have accrued is as nothing without an army needed to sustain and protect it in this harsh world. Dale is strong, and we will not relinquish our lands, no matter if another dragon would come to take them from us. Neither shadow spawn of Mordor nor Easterlings will take our lands, unless every fighting man of Dale lay dead and every town burning and blackened. We relinquish nothing to the dogs of Sauron, nor do we fear him. To him and his pawns we say, come and feel the spears of the Leakmen. Hello my friends and welcome back for 3rd Age Total War Divide and Conquer. We are back with a brand new campaign having just finished of course our Khan campaign and our Ered Luin campaign. And right now we will be playing as the Kingdom of Dale. Here we are. So we're going to play very hard, very hard, long campaign of course as always. You can read through the information here. Um, but I did try to include most of the information, most of the, the setting of course in the intro which was largely based on one of the introduction screens that we will get in a couple minutes. So, for the long campaign rolls, we need to hold 30 regions, including Realm of Dale, Naked Hill, I'm not sure, is that Dol Guldur? I might be mistaken. And Gathot, and we need to eliminate the Eastlings of Rune and Dol Guldur. Now, it is my personal victory condition to reunite, of course, the old kingdom of Rovanion. Alright, so, Dale, we are a ranged focus faction, we have some very good archers, including some units that get Black Archers, which is a special ability, there we go, special features, Black Arrows, which are armor-piercing. So again, good archers. A versatile roster, we do have good infantry, decent enough cavalry. We also get some elven troops and some dwarven troops, as long as we maintain those alliances of old. But we do start with a very poor early game economy, because we need to rise, literally, from the ashes of Dale, of course. Notable units are the Hearthguard, the Earls, which is a very strong cavalry unit, and the Thala Rangers. Alright, with that said, I will see you on the strategy map. Alright, so here we are. This never gets old. Welcome to Divide and Conquer, a new beginning for us, of course. So this information is not new, but I will slowly scroll over it in case you are new to the channel or new to Divide and Conquer in general. If you want to see everything which we already know, all of that. Very few factions can build boats. We are one of the few factions that can because we are, of course, very reliant on the River Kelduin. And that is information on the Kingdom of Dale. But a lot of it will seem familiar to you if you watched the intro, of course. Alright, there we go. And then the Allegiances of Old, which is what I talked about previously, is of course, in the days of old, King Bard, who we saw in The Hobbit, of course. He made lasting alliances with King Jane of Erebor and King Thranduil of Mirkwood. If we can keep those alliances, which are like full-on alliances, we get military access, they get military access, trade rights, the entire spiel. Then we can get some unique units of them, so it's here for now, however, as long as we maintain our own peace with these nations, Oh, we just need to maintain peace, oh. Then hardy battalions of dwarven warriors will join with keen-sighted woodland rangers in the great town hall of Dale. Okay. And then, of course, the barracks events, which might be the, one of the uh, last times we'll see it, because, of course, they are removing it in version 5. There we go. Alright, nothing new there. So, as the intro made clear, we are in a bit of an economic despair. We have 5,000 in the coffers, and we are losing money quite heftily actually our expenditure is 700 higher than our income so let us try to fix that first before we try to expand well there is of course but meddling but we'll get to that soon first things first i do spot some forts here and of course as we know as they'll actually you know what let's talk a little before at the beginning of the campaign it doesn't matter at all that much this is what the world map looks like by turn one now do bear in mind that there is a turn two auto expansion 
So at the second turn, these uh, some of these settlements, like Austin Gale, Dol Dingva, for example, will become immediately Dol Guldur settlements because um, they just want to give the AI more of a fighting chance. But we are mostly safe from enemies. Rune is rather far off and will be kept busy with Dorwinian and even Edible for a little bit. Dol Guldur will keep busy with Lorien, the Woodland Realm, and of course the Vale of Anduin. So we are in a very good starting position. We don't have that many enemies we have to worry about right now. So we can take the time, of course, to restore our economy. Our post-corona economy. First things first, let's plop some units in forts. That will immediately reduce some of the upkeep costs there. I will keep Fidusith in Eskaroth because I think he brings in more money than he costs. But it does of course not get free upkeep, which is something we'll fix next. Uh, Grasscard, all these units can move to a fort as well. Uh, the Spy can actually move more towards Dol Guldur, but I think he can cross... Yep, he can cross over here. Okay, Nambur Kaupis. That's a very unfortunate name, Kaupis. I will also send towards the fort that. Now we do have a starting army here if with our Prince, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Prince Brand, who comes with Hardguard, which is one of the few units that can use the Black Arrows, which are armor-piercing and do <laughs> insane amounts of damage. So this is basically our standing army. We're going to use that one. They're in a fort right now, so if we move them out, it will cost us money. But we can gain much more money by taking Bur Marling rather early on. So let us build some ramps. I do have Soul Swords Bandits. I think they have some Ravanian mercenaries as well. Yes, we could take a look at them. No, we don't get Okay. So what we need to focus on first, I believe, is to get free upkeep for our generals. And there's actually John Reese Davis. Look, it's two Gimli's. Because <laughs> of course it's the same actor. I think what we need to do first is to get free upkeep for the generals. Because like this guy, for example, Vidasith, he must take about... Let's actually take a quick peek. 340 in upkeep. So, that's quite a lot of money that we can actually uh, avoid spending. Let's see, what do we need for the free upkeep? Uh, the tomb, no. Merchant's off, no. Do we not get a free upkeep building? Ah, oh, there we go, the Great Hall. Gives us two free upkeep units. Though I'm not sure why... Hmm... I think he can't get free upkeep because we cannot train that unit anywhere. I need to take a look what generals he does. A royal guardsman. Huh. I know that's usually the strategy with um, Gondor is to get free upkeep buildings first. But it might actually be better. Let's see. I should bring in a lot of money from trade. Edelbord, Grasscard, Eskarov. Hmm. Are we not trading with the Wooden Drone? Let's take a look, actually, real quick. No, we are trading with them. We're also allied with the Dwarves of Khazadum and Dorwinian as well, which is really good. So, yeah, what do we build first? That is, of course, the question. So that brings in 204 compared to 136. Mm-hmm. Gosh. I was going into this thinking, we'll just get the free upkeep, and that's the easiest way and the quickest way to gain money. Now having some doubts, 296. Uh, you know what, let's get the free upkeep, fuck it. Oh, that's quite pricey, I can only get like one of them. Okay, you know what. Let's not get it here because I don't think it'll actually do anything, but I think it will do something here. It's cheaper as well, so let's get the meeting hall. Same for Burkaupis. Uh, meeting hall, and then let us focus on either farms or... Maybe chicken farming. How much does that do? 272 compared to 204. That's 70 extra income. That's not too bad. What about uh, Great Exchange? Because that's a fairly cheap building. 246. Hmm. Well, we could get the Mason's Hall, but we might just be bankrupt by the time we get it. So I think it's better to spend the money we have by doing that. Okay. Do we start with the Diplomat, actually? We do not. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Alright. We do start with a ship that we can send to scout down below. Admiral Bondi. Alright. Down to Kelduin. Where we bring up the barrels of wine for King Thranduil. Alright, let's end the turn. I think I did everything I wanted to do. I did just make the most out of my turns, of course. We're not building an Eskaroth, and we do have some money to spend, so I might as well build something there. 
Um, let us get the green exchange as well. Boom. All right. And there goes our, all our money, probably. <laughs> I hope you guys are hyped for the start of this new campaign. I am super hyped. I've been meaning to play Dale for a little bit, and then when I did the poll at the end of our Khan campaign, Dale was by far the most popular faction. I didn't even have to count the votes. It was just Dale everywhere. Um, but the second faction, the one that the second most votes, was probably the Anduin Vale. Which, these campaigns are kind of similar in a way, as in we're probably going to face roughly the same enemies, except for Gundabad maybe. Depends on how strong Gundabad is. Usually Erebor wins against Gundabad, but sometimes it happens that Gundabad takes the mountain. Alright, if I toggle the Fog of War now... <clears throat> take a Condovan, where the hell is that? Uh, I can only take one at a time, eh? Then you see that all the factions have gained some territory for free. So the Gulder has expanded quite a bit actually, because they only start with the one settlement. They get Austin Gilligan all the way up to Erin Runen. Oh shit. So we actually are already bordering them? No, not quite, not quite. Almost, almost. Let's turn that back up. I'm not going to abuse it too much, don't worry. It's going to be a very cheat free campaign. Alright, you all move to the forts. Uh, you'll take a little bit longer. That's alright. Faction announcements, retinue expense, Prince brand, smog scale scabbard. Ooh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And King Bane get minus 10% construction cost, plus 2% trade. That's really good. So we're going to keep him in a deal for now, which is where he is most useful. And the Dunedain, of course, reclaimed for us. All right, I think we're going to end the turn right away. Um, or do I attack Burmarlinger? It's only three turns, you know? Normally I'd attack quicker just to get the income, but... Seeing as it's only three turns, I think I'll wait them out. Because we all know, of course, that towers in siege battles are fucking insane and they can do a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, boys. I hope you're all doing well. I know the situation is, of course, still the same as usual. I mean, it's been uh, it's been like this for well, actually two months now. I just looked at the date. It's already May 13. Now, this video might come out May 14, depending on how much editing work I have. Alright, Isengard and Rohan, no surprise there. And then the meeting halls are done, so the general should have free upkeep. Yes. Same in Burkaupis. Yes. Okay, so that worked out nicely because that saves us 250-500 a turn. So that might just stabilize our budget a little bit. No, maybe once the green exchange is done. Alright, two more turns. We will just wait it out. Mr. Spy. There's not much to spy upon just yet. Alright, now it wouldn't hurt, of course, to get another diplomat. Well, not another, just get a diplomat. Alright, so our economy is crippling more and more. I might just have to raise taxes a little bit just to get out of this pit. Goodness gracious. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I do want to still have population growth, although these settlements are, it seems, maxed out. So it actually doesn't matter all that much. No. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait for Marlinge to be finished, and then we can send those troops back to the fort. Yes. I mean, I could attack it, but it's one more turn, so it literally does not matter one bit. You keep moving. All right. Where shall we spy? Well, let's go towards the Winian and Ruin, so we have a bit of an idea how that war goes. Because it is, of course, very important for us. Because Dale and Ruin are kind of like the ends of a scale. If Rune does well, Dale kind of drops down and just suffers. But if Dale and Darwinian, by extension, do well, then Rune just completely withers away. And part of that also depends on the choice the Varigs of Khan make, of course. Alright, and here comes our first battle. But yeah, like I was saying, to finish my thought, if the Varigs of Khan side with the good factions, then Rune is most often completely screwed. Anyway, our first battle, the Siege of Bird Marlinge. I will see you guys on the battlefield. All right, lads, here we are. Let's make sure everyone drops the ram. I would like to take some time to take a look at our units, but of course, this is a sally out fight, so the enemy will not give us much time to take a look, but we can move our units a little bit. So there's Dale Cavalry. Let's take a look at their statue real quick. 
6 attack, 5 charge, pretty mediocre, nothing too great, but for an early, turn cav uh, early tier cavalry unit, that's actually not too shabby. And 10 total defense, and the Dalian Swordsman, 7, 3, 11, which I think puts them at the same tier as like Gondor Militia. So it's alright, it's good for the early game, but nothing too crazy. The Dalian Longbowman, 4 missile attack is quite high, especially for a 152 uh, unit size. 180 meters is not bad, but then, here's the big daddy of them all, the Hearth Guard, 103 of them. Which, of course, we will not be able to maintain that number. 7 missile attack, you might think, okay, that's that's good, but that's not that good. Armor piercing, my lads, armor piercing. 170 meters, so actually a shorter range than the longbows, interesting enough. And 25 total defense, and they do use spears in battle, so they are actually pretty good against cavalry. They're one of the few archer units you can actually just let them do their own thing and don't have to worry about them getting calf charged and panicking and, oh no, they're gonna rout... Yeah, let's make sure they're all on defensive. You of course need to check the special ability, something I forgot. But leadership, I think, is the same ability that some of the generals of Gondor get. So it's nothing new for us. Alright, so the enemy's got some Rovanian Hunters, which is just a javelin unit. So we need to be a little bit careful with our cavalry. Some bandits, we've been seen many times before. And some cell swords, which our black arrows should focus on. Because they are, of course... The most heavily armoured foe we'll be facing with that gothic armour, which looks absolutely smashing. Look at that. Now we have the black arrows, you can tell by the black trail. Kind of similar to the poison arrows we saw with Dol Guldur, of course. Alright. Move the cavalry back a little bit. Now let's push the infantry a bit closer, but not too close. Don't want them to get shot by the towers. Alright, so those soul swords are just falling apart. Oh my goodness. Keep focusing on them. They can make life difficult for us. Alright, Dalian Swordsman getting in position. Beautiful. I think we should move the... Alright, he wants to run at me. I think I'll just face him. Alright, charge in, lads. If he wants to have a go. Let's move our cavalry to the side. I'm still kind of used to playing with the dwarves, but I need to make sure that we use our movement. Because unlike the dwarves, we are not super slow. We are actually quite speedy and zippity across the battlefield. So we can actually take the time to get into a better position. Right, let's see if we can charge the Ravanian hunters in the rear, and they will no doubt straight up run away. Alright, the half guard can keep firing. What I could do, actually, is try and take the town square. That will make him run, and then our archers can get even better shots off. Okay. It's a pretty good firing angle there. If we pretend to take the town square, it will lure a lot of their forces away. And then our archers will have more free reign, you know. And you can type reign, R-E-I-N-G, in that way, but also R-A-I-N. R A I N? Yeah, that's right. It's difficult to spell in English because the same letter in Dutch is pronounced differently, and sometimes, like, the way in English an E is written, the E of English, is the way in Dutch you spell an I. We would call that an E. And an A from, like, um, Dale, that would be an E in our case. <laughs> Does it make sense? It probably doesn't make any sense, what I'm babbling about. Yeah, so that worked. So, so it's on our kind of pushing back. Oh, and these guys are going to have a field, they're just firing. They are firing at the side of their shields, which is a bit more annoying, but... It still does a whole lot more damage than firing from over here. They're already waiting out of the timer. I thought they would come after me, but... They don't seem to be too inclined to do so. I think they'll only come after us the moment they lose their forces. They start withdrawing, routing away. But by then, of course, it's way too late. Ravanian Spearmen. We'll probably end up using some of these Ravanian units as well, because uh, they're fairly widely available as a mercenary unit. Ravanian Riders, for example. And they're not the best unit, but... You know, this is medieval too. Every cavalry unit is good to some extent. They don't all have to be... Uh, Fucking swan knights. <laughs> Sometimes they're just good, you know? 
Alright, move around just a little bit more. Just appreciate the fighting for a little bit. Oh man, I love Medieval too. The fighting just feels so brutal and so raw. And there's a good sense of realism about it, because realistically, fighting, especially in like medieval times, it wasn't all flamboyant and fancy spinning and twisting and whatnot. It usually was pretty clumsy, you know, wielding all that armor. Even if you're lightly armored, it's still a bit clumsy. You're not going to be uh, juggling javelins or throwing axes and fighting with the other hand. and You know, it doesn't really work that way. Alright. The only long woman can at least hold her own a little bit. And we just fired point blank into <laughs> their face. And there we go. I'll see you back on the strategy. Actually, no. Before I do that, let's take a look at the stats. So the hearth guard killed 140, they lost 2, of which we healed 1. <laughs> so in total we lost 23%, so a quarter unit, that's not too bad for a new settlement. The daily and swordsman unit got absolutely wiped out, but they were facing multiple enemies at the same time. We also caused some friendly fire there, but you know, if we look at the kills of the longbowmen, I think it's worth it. Del Calvary, of course, losing a lot of troops as well, more than I would have liked, but... All in all, I'll see you back on the strategy map. Alright, my friends. Okay. Can you stop yelling, Mr. Commander? So our first real choice is here. Do we occupy, sack, or exterminate the settlement? Well, the settlement really has nothing except a wall. So I don't think there's much point in this choice. I don't think it affects a whole lot. So I think I could just safely occupy it. And it would save 500 people from the bleed. So let's do that. And I'm sure Prince Brand is uh, charming enough to keep the peace. All right, so our economy is looking a little bit healthier. And what we can do now, which will save us most money... Just plop these guys, which are five units, into the daily and fort. And I think that should stay... Of course, right, it's only four units, I get the bonus. Doesn't matter too much. That does stabilize our economy. Good. Good, good, good. That's really good. Um, we can't build anything now, of course, but we can next turn. All right, you keep moving towards Rune. The Sea of Rune right here. Look at that. The settlement up here as well, which I'd love to take at one point. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, this settlement is amazing for sea trade. Because you can trade with all the coastal regions here and it counts as sea trade, which you can get buildings like Merchant's Wharf and all that jazz and it's it's pretty good. You can plop in that as well. Look at this, the Northman Militia stack. I expect you're going to have a, a decent amount of money. Like, I could move this guy to the fort... You know what, that actually saves me money, because the the bonus income he gives is only 200. So I think I'm, yeah, I'm better off, actually. Huh, interesting. And the wooden drum likes me, of course. Alright, let's end the turn, then. <clears throat> I need a sip of water, man, my voice is killing me. <clears throat> right, what a way to start off a new campaign. <laughs> my voice is already abandoning me on episode 1. That is not a good start. It's not a good impression on the new viewers as well. Because I'm sure this video will get the attention of some people who have never seen any of my videos. So in that case, welcome to the channel, of course. Feel free to subscribe. I mainly do 3rd each stuff. Casa Doom likes me, Erebor likes me, of course everybody likes me. I'm really fun. And right there, allies and Donald and Brief have declared a truce. At turn 6, alright, that's pretty quick. So I think this is going to be our mainland territory for a little bit, at least until we fix our economy, which could take up to, I don't know, 10 more turns or something. Uh, we do have reserve forces, of course, if need be. Um, let's see. Hmm. I think we're better off getting Mason's Hall. It's the only thing we can build. We'll create a great exchange in Budkaupis. Okay... Trade income, 153. Some devastation here that will go away. So that brings in one... Oh, that's pretty pretty poopy. Let's get the Mason's Hall in Dale. I think that's going to do the most for us right now. Maybe an Eskaroth. I think Eskaroth has the potential to be a richer settlement. I think it's going to take a fair bit, because it kind of depends on the sea trade. Okay, Strondost. Very cool. I did watch the faction overview for the... Vi no, it wasn't the faction overview. It was a video talking about the roadmap to version 5 of Divide and Conquer. 
If you haven't watched it yet, watch it. It's on Arahir Galadirithon's channel, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. <clears throat> and it was about changing the way the elves are intertwined with the Darwinian men by adding a new settlement over here that is kind of like an elven safe haven for the Mariquendi, of course. I uh, thought that was a pretty cool idea. Right, Production is pretty high already, actually. Seven. That's decent. That's more than decent. Darwinian likes us as well. We're trading with Darwinian already. Uh, yeah, we are. We're trading with the Anduin Vale. We are not. They'd be a good trade partner. But of course, we need to focus our money elsewhere now. Um, let's just get Mason's Hall now. That's something we can afford. Alright, so yeah, it's the only guy that's now taking up a lot of um, upkeep costs. Actually, it might be worth it to um, stall... Nah, whatever, we'll just build Mason's Hall, it's fine. It's fine! We need, <clears throat> we need to get our economy up to snuff. But that will take a while. It's kind of similar to the Gondor campaign. Well, we did start with a ruined economy, and that turned out to, uh, you know, that took a while, and we had some rough battles with Mordor, but that's at least a threat we don't have to deal with right now. Um, but once our economy was fixed, we were raking in big cash. It's already becoming a lot better than it was what we started with. Mason's Hall and Dale is done. Let's see, King Bane, again, less construction costs. Bjorn gets the plus 5% movement points. Where is Bjorn? Okay, he's in Grassgard. Alright, that's pretty good. Um, let's see, what can we build in Dale? Well, we can straight up get the Master's Mason's Hall. I feel like roads are going to be super helpful. Yeah, that is so much. Yeah, we want roads. Um, we could wait one turn. Or Trading Post. I think Trading Post is also like super good. Um, that's chicken farming. 272. Oh, that's actually not that. I thought it did more than that. Um, burp, 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 burp. let's just get the master mason so I'll get the highest tier or not I don't know tough choices tough choices you know what I, no you know what let's go to Burmarling and let's get the meeting hall because that's fairly cheap Escaroth is building let's make sure we are building and deal something let us get the market mm, I don't know man Mm, I want something that doesn't take too many turns. Uh, it's all four turns, it seems. Oh, this is two turns, but that's pretty shite. Arr, tough choices, tough choices. A herbalist. That's pretty good, but we'll get that leader. Let's get the... Mm, get the market. It also gives a flat plus 100 building income, which is quite amazing. I expect it to take until, like, turn 20 before our economy is up to snuff. So this will probably be the economic rebuild episode, and then the next episode is the one where we'll go to war, start raising some armies, you know. But, as always, the channel is by the people for the people. So if you guys have special requests, or you want me to do something special, do let me know. Of course, Mason's Hall in Eskaroth. Alright, what shall we build in Eskaroth? Is there anything special that I can build? Tomb shipwright, wouldn't be too bad. Um, I just need buildings that bring in cash. Farming outpost is fairly cheap. 68, 136. That's not too shabby, actually. It's just mainly important that we're building in every settlement. Well, not every settlement, but in most settlements at all times. That's what brings in the cash. If you're doing nothing, you're not gaining anything either. It's all about the potential. It's not as much about having the money in your coffers, it's having the money every turn, and that's what enables you to be to be able to afford your armies at all times. And that is something that we cannot afford at the moment. We cannot afford any troops. If we sally out any of our armies, then our economy just goes... Goes to shite. Let's see, what's finished? The meeting hall in Burmaling. So that should give him free upkeep? No. See, it's it's kind of weird. But I guess because he has Hearthguard, it's not seen as the general unit. So it doesn't actually do anything. How much does that do? 136. 149. 
It's, it's not bad. It's just not very good. Well, let's build something in Eskroth then. Let's get the mark. Actually, no. Let's build the trading post there so we can compare the two. Alright. Well. Yes, my lord. That would leave them happy. I could put that guy there because his upkeep is 416, which is high, and these guys are 211, which is not as high. Alright, what unit is the cheapest? 230, 211, 216. I doubt I'll get attacked anytime soon. So that should give us a little bit more cash. We are trying to maximize our profits. Because I do want to get our economy off the snuff as soon as possible. That's so crucial. It dictates the entire pace of the campaign. How fast can you fix your economy? Then again, I might be making the wrong choices in terms of building, but... It's more important just to keep building. Keep making progress. That's the important part. It matters less what you build. I mean, don't start building military buildings or anything like that right now, because they're not going to do anything for you. Count and Gondor are at peace. Already... So that's before the script kicks in, right? Because if they have the script, they should be allied, and they're not. So they just they just decided to go to peace, which... Okay, that's rather odd. <laughs> Very odd. So Khan, there's no enemies right now. <clears throat> okay. I mean, it's their choice. You know, we could wait for one turn, then we can get the roads. And those roads can be quite useful. It seems you are building in most settlements. I could get something rather cheap here. How much are the roads? Treasury total 4.2k. And the roads are 3.6. Nah, I shouldn't spend anything then. I cannot afford it. But those roads are going to be very, very good. Now, I'm not sure where the border lies between Grassguard and Dale. As in, I'm not sure which part will get the roads and which part won't. It seems like the Dale part is rather small. So, I would think the benefits of the roads are tiny, but apparently they're not. Apparently those roads are going to rake in cash like you've never seen it. As it is winter. Okay, let's build that. So we have 800 left. That's not enough for anything now, is it? A leather tanner. Eh. Just leather tanners. Yeah, no. Fuck that. Alright, let's take a look at our economy now. Yeah, I'm not sure what's... I can never really understand this part. Projected profits, projected totals. Because our treasury total is still higher. This... I don't really understand. Maybe it's compared to last turn or something like that. Ah, whatever. Let's end the turn. <laughs> I know it's not the most exciting start to a campaign, but don't worry. We will more than make up for it. Maybe even at one point we'll get rid of Erebor and Thranduil. Maybe. I'm not saying we will for sure, I never really know how I'm going to start these campaigns when I start them. Sometimes some weird shit happens, man. Another test taken this- oh, that's... Condovan. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's Rune that took it. I actually shouldn't have skipped that message, I kind of didn't check what was that. So Rune's already at my border, which is a lot quicker than I would have liked. They are at war, right? They're not. Okay, so the Winion and Rune are not at war, which does enable Rune to, of course, see some land unopposed. Let's plop a watchtower down in case they try anything. We should at least see them coming. Alright, building the roads out will take a fair bit. Let's get the Mason's Hall, and then in Cowpiss. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep laughing at that. Sorry, I'm I'm really childish. I really, really am. All right. So I think once we get the roads and once we get the buildings that we're building right now done, we can start looking towards our military a little bit. Hello, Erebor. What the hell do you want, Mr. Gimli? <laughs> He's glitching in and out of existence. Typical Gimli. What a lad. Alright. Goblins of Moria. I think Goblins of Moria got one vote. Which is surprising, because <laughs> I didn't expect them to get any votes. 
But of course, something I should, probably should have said at the beginning of the video, just because your faction, the one faction you wanted to see me play, didn't win, doesn't mean we're never going to play them. I've never done a Dale campaign, so this is a first, so the people who wanted a Dale campaign can now be happy. And I'm happy too. Um, but if you're like, oh man, I really wanted to see, you know, Woodland Drone, for example, don't worry, we'll do it at one point. I have done many campaigns, I have done Arada Naim, let's actually take a look. Oh, there's so many, I've done Rune. I've done, and with done I mean finished, because I've started some that I never finished, but I've done Rune, I've done the other name, I've done Kant, I've done Gondor, I've done Dwarves of Red Luin, just now, I've done Casa Doom, I have done the Northern Dunedain, er, I think that's it, am I forgetting about a faction? I don't think so, so I've done plenty, and I'm planning to do them all at one point, so don't worry, your faction will be played at one point. Get some more watchtowers, man. I know he's costing me money in the upkeep, but... Alright, so we've got to the north and the ruin to the south. So this will be our mainland for now. Which, you know, it's enough settlements to get an economy going. Swain. A trading post in Eskaroth. That doesn't really do that much. I should probably look towards getting a diplomat now. It's fairly pricey, but... If we can get some more trade rights going, it will help out. And of course, the billman. A unit I am very keen to use, because if you remember my Dol Guldur campaign, another faction I completed, Dol Guldur, forgot to mention that one, um, they kicked my ass more than once. Those billmen are notoriously strong. Uh, let's see, let's get a market. Actually, that's kind of expensive. Can't really get anything in any other settlements now, whatever. We'll have to just uh, stick it out. Alright. Now I do wonder which direction I should send my... My diplomat first. I could get some trade rights with Rune going, which would benefit me quite well, but then again, Rune will probably declare war on us at one point anyway, so if we get trade rights with them, it probably won't be long lived. We could get trade rights with the Anduin Vale, who are not keen to attack me, but they're kind of far away, you know. We're not going to get much trade out of them. With Rune, we'd get some direct bonuses, I think. It would help out. Okay, well, I guess the game wants me to talk to Dol Guldur, so I can do that. It's along the way. And they are pushing hard, but then again, their units are dirt cheap, and mine aren't. Alright, Grass Guard. Well, none of these are really the buildings I want to see, so... I want economy, man. Let's get farms. Yes. Prince Brand keep popping down watch. There's some more rebel land here. Not sure where exactly it is. I'm not sure if I want to spend my forces to try and take it. It would leave Burmarling relatively undefended, so it does scare me a little bit. Alright, so the winning took Ilanin. Interesting. Yeah, I have no idea where the settlement here is. Well, the road's going this way, so it's somewhere over here. I mean, I could try and take it. Um, it's just if Rune comes, it's going to be such a fucking annoying place to defend. Whilst here we have the bridges, which can, you know, they're quite crucial chokeholds. Mm. Diplomat's retinue. Diplomat's signet. Oh, interesting. Of course, every faction has kind of their own unique pool of retinue and... Um, what are the other ones called? Stuff. <laughs> Junk. <laughs> Treats as well. Hello, Wooden Drum. What are you all trying to do? Trying to bribe me? That doesn't work in this game. Go away. Stop wasting my time. I mean, I'll talk about wasting time, but... The turn times have been reduced so much. They used to be quite long sometimes, but... They've really done a good job in fixing that. I am running the hotfix version, by the way. So, we should see... Very little crashing happening. Well, never yes, say never, of course. Wither here. As you wish. Wither there. Tomorrow Wither everywhere. Again, nothing I really want to build. Our roads are almost done. They were done by the 20 turn mark. And that was a turn I said we would get our economic relands, but <laughs> we're not there yet. Your orders, my lord. I guess I can get Prince Brandt to scout ahead. Yes. Where's that settlement? It's yes. so far away as well. Yes, my lord. Uh, depending on the garrison, he might just be able to take it alone. <laughs> He's quite strong. Alright, another end turn. 
as our economy is not there quite yet. But we're getting there, we're getting there. The economy in Medieval 2 is kind of weird. At one point it just all clicks and suddenly you see your income just skyrocket. Because right now we've reduced our expenses to the bare minimum. The only unit that's being paid right now, which is kind of sad if you think about it, if you're sitting in the fort you don't get paid, is Mr. Bean. Oh no, not Bean, what's his name? Brand. Yes, my lord. So I'm not really sure where our money is going. Army upkeep is 775. That seems order, too high. 416. Ah, probably the ships. ships 100. So there's one more unit that's not getting free upkeep. Ah, these guys. Oh, we can actually move them back. That should save us some cash. Yep, 564. The King's Spurs is at minus 250. Wow, that's annoying. <laughs> Why is our king sobbing up all that money? What's he doing with that? I guess I don't want to know. Merchant trade. Yeah, trade is... is rather low still. Okay, so uh, Sauron likes me. Well, that's unexpected. Well, let's talk to... Dol Guldur first. Hello, Lunhur, you ugly, ugly man. Man orc. Uh, well, we could start selling map information, but... I don't know, it's kind of cheesy in my opinion. It does bring in a lot of money though, so I'm not sure if... Let's not do it like every turn, we can do it for now. Let's do it once per faction, I think that's a good rule. You can only sell it once per faction. Alright, that's uh, 1.2k in the back, with that bonus in there as well, beautiful. Can we get some economic buildings please? Not really, we can get chicken farming, which I guess is sort of economic. Let's get it. Do want to upgrade these settlements at one point? All right, Prince Brand. Where's that settlement, man? With honor. Yes. Holy shit! Where the hell is it? With honor. Okay, I didn't expect this. I think I'll be moving him back. The settlement's somewhere, somewhere in here. Jesus Christ! All right, Dol Guldur likes me. Yes, my lord. Why did I move you back? Uh, no, don't go back. Keep going south. <laughs> go to Rune. There's mysterious Easterlings that have attacked us in the past. Have they attacked us? No, they haven't. I know Dale gets attacked by the Easterlings during the War of the Ring, but that's, that hasn't started yet officially. We're about, I don't know, 10 years before this, the War of the Ring, somewhere around that time. I'm sure someone will correct me on that. Anarian, if you're out there. I'm sure you know the answer, my friend. I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right, out of the name. Talk to the enemy. Oh, okay. I guess. I guess my council is doing the thinking for me. Where did you say that was? Over here. I'm not sure what settlement that is. It's not Bjorn's Hall. It's a little bit deeper in there. A market in Escaroth. Oh, we can actually already get a Thala Rangers. Jesus Christ. So the Thala Rangers. Uh, a little bit weaker than the other rangers, the Athelian rangers and Dunedain rangers, and I think there's one more ranger unit that I now cannot get the name of. Beruthil rangers, I guess, but they got a different name now. Ah, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, but they have, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the longest range of all the rangers up there with the elves, 240. So, what shall we build? Well, I guess a trader exchange wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, oh, that actually brings in quite a bit of cash. Everybody likes us. You're still blocked? No, I already moved you, right? Yep. Yes, Everybody likes me. As we are ramping up our production. It's half of what Mordor is producing. I'm not sure what Mordor... Oh, fuck. I'm not sure what Mordor produces. Grog, I guess. They're a world-renowned Grog exporter nation. <laughs> OPEC with Grog. I don't know, man. I don't even know what grog is. I mean, it's, it's something they drink, I know that. It's like a weird alcoholic beverage, but who knows what it's made of, you know? I feel like it's one of those beers that is made out of, like, skims and, and leftovers of other beers. I feel like that's that's grog. In Belgium, we have a beer like that called Karapils, which is exactly that. It's just leftovers from other beers, and they just kind of blend it together. 
So every every crate tastes differently depending on you know what leftovers they're from. Yeah, that sounds really weird. I, I realize that now that I'm explaining it. But that's yeah, it's a Belgian thing. I don't have much more to say about it. It's not that bad to be honest. It's it's dirt cheap. It's like poor man's beer. But as a student, of course, well, I'm no longer a student. But back when I was a student, it was the go-to drink because it was so dirt cheap. All right, let's bring Prince Brand home because he's costing me too much money. Yes. Am I building everywhere? Probably not. Is there anything useful I can build in these settlements though? That is the real question. Well, actually, I am building everywhere. Nice. So I'll get some roads finished and that should really put a spike on our income. As we're finally getting somewhere. And by the time we finally have a strong economy and we can field an army, all the rebel lands in our area have, of course, already been captured. So we'll have to declare war on a faction sooner rather than later. And I do believe, but it's hard to predict, but I do believe that our first enemy will be Dorkuldur. I don't think... I guess it's mostly I don't hope. Or I do hope. Jesus Christ. I do hope that it's not Rune. Because Rune is pretty strong, even before Barracks event, whilst Dorkuldur is pretty trash before Barracks event. Except for Kamul, of course. Yes, my lord. Kamul's a badass. No, come on, move. My lord. Move through That's the woods of Merc. There should be a yes. settlement right here. Alright, Dale has roads, which does <laughs> increase the income by quite a bit. Nice. Okay. So what shall we get now? A fairground? Plus 200. That's actually really good. Yeah, let's get it. Anything else I was done? Right, roads and modeling as well. Let's get a green exchange. Prince Brand, get your ass home. Pop down another watchtower, why not? For good measure. For good measure. Actually, uh... Use this guy to scout around a bit. Now my scout should be somewhere around here, yeah. Just kind of see what Rune's up to, you know. Miss Strand, the capital. Bakr. Alright. I think again that's all for this turn. It seems like the old is already pushing up against Randall's Hall. Oh, that's really early on. My god, the old has many enemies. <laughs> They're fighting both the Dwarves of Casa Doom, the Vale of the Winian, the Anduin Vale, the Wooden Drum, and Lothlorien. I think it's safe to say that the old will not be granted a very long life in this campaign. I don't think we'll be seeing much of them. Well, ever say never do. They do get three Nazgul, which do respawn, so... They got that going for them, but it feels like Dorgul will be the easiest route to expand towards. The first settlements to conquer to rebuild Rovanion, of course, of course. Which, that is our goal, from a law perspective. To rebuild Rovanion, and we shall rename it Rovanion as well. We shall not be the Kingdom of Dale, we shall be the Kingdom of Rovanion, with, of course, the capital being Dale. Or we can maybe, like, blend it together, the Kingdom of Dale Vanion or something like that. Yes, God-awful name. Leothold, right, I forgot about that. Fastrit. Uh, do you want to trade? Of course you do. I don't hold anyone at ransom, my friend. I've hit that line too many times. Boom. Another cash injection, I think. That does give me units. 750, so that's on 1.2k. My lord. Um, oh, can we go towards Rune now, or are you going to stop me? If only I could I'll probably get another mission next time. Alright, so Rune and Dominion are finally at war. As expected, sorta. Uh, okay, got some farm and pikemen, if you want to. Cram. A biscuit-like food made by the men of Eskaroth and Dale. Very nutritious. It is used for sustenance on long journeys. That actually does look kind of tasty, to be honest. It kind of looks like a biscuit, which... We have in Belgium, but I'm not sure if it's if it's um, in other countries as well. It's called Tuk. It's T U C, Tuk, and it kind of it really looks like that, exactly like that. I'll put a picture on the screen of it right now, so you can take a look. But I'm not sure if it's a thing in other countries. I don't know those things. Okay, we're building in these settlements. Gosh, uh, there's nothing really too useful here. I guess I'll get the leather tanner if anything. It's building income and. 
Getting the armor upgrades isn't too shabby. Alright. Economic reconstruction is almost complete. I can already train some units here because we do get free upkeep, but how many units? Palace of Gideon... Anything special here? Gideon was the last king of Dale before Smaug grew into city and killed hundreds of Dalesmen. Bart the Bowman took the mantle of king once again after the defeat of the Great Lizard. In honor of his ancestor, he, re he rebuilt the old palace of Dale and named it after Gideon for his valiant defense of the city from the dragon. The palace commands a 360-degree view of the valley all around and marks the high point of Dwarven and Northmen Corporation. Very cool. So we got one free upkeep unit from that. Where do we get? Oh, and two more from here. So we do only get three. So we are maxed out, but we do have some room here in the fort. We can get one more in there. And we can train. I guess it wouldn't be bad to already train like some of our rangers just to like... Run out to pool, because unit pool's at maximum, as it says there. Um, and as long as you're at maximum, I don't think the pool replenishes. So if we already have them, you know, they're ready for when we need them to go to war. Same with, like, the Edibor infantry, for example. So we can actually get one more unit as well. What would be best? Kudrats, 415, or Edibor infantry, which is 813, that's quite good. Or Dalian Billman, hmm. I think we got some Edibor infantry. I do want to make use of the cooperation between Dwarves, Dale, and uh, Woodland Elves. You know, it's cool from a lore perspective, and I want to incorporate that as much in the campaign as well. Alright, and our New Deal politics are starting to pay off, quite literally. And that's, that's pretty much the biggest obstacle you have as Dale. Once your economy is in order, just get some armies and start fighting, you know? Your troops are more than capable. They are not quite as strong as Dwarven units or Elven units or even Gondorian units. But, you know, Dolgoldor, for example, they're not going to stand a chance against us. Rune would put up a good fight, but they're already busy with other factions, so they should leave us alone for now. And, of course, our stronger units are very much on the same level as their stronger units. Talk to the Goblins of Moria. Well, I don't know which military units I'll get. I might actually get, like, um... Thala Rangers, for example. It might be possible. Uh, right, the Erebor Infantry. Pop them in the fort. Oh, look at them. Uh, beautiful beards. Corona quarantine beard right there. <laughs> Alright, are we building in all our settlements? We are. There's not much else to do. We can, of course, save some money. Uh, let's swap you over and bring you to the fort. Good. Good, good, good. So we can actually start to look towards expanding our realm a little bit. We can probably declare war with the um, Dol Guldur and afford a war with them. So let's send our spy to just kind of check where we should attack from. Because of course we will not have many units so we need to use them as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Now I don't want to make the first episode too long and I do want to ask you guys opinion on the shorter episodes because of course my episodes, the ones that I did before that of the old campaigns tend to be quite long and I know that kind of scares off some people. Some people that would otherwise be interested in watching this uh, these type of videos but they'd be like, oh no man, Izzy's just gonna rant on for an hour, an hour and a half. That's way too long. I can't stomach that. So in order to kind of broaden the audience a bit, I'm going to try to keep it a bit shorter. Of course, I will edit out some things. Dolamroth expands. All right, let's take a look at Dolamroth, actually. I always find that fun when you get those messages of Dolamroth is doing horrible or Dolamroth is doing well. And they are doing rather well, but they tend to do that all the time, but then they get too greedy. As you can see, they're stretched rather thin in these elements, and then, like, Karad or Khan comes in and just crushes them. But it seems like Khans will probably be at peace with Tholamroth. Yep. But they're at war with the other name, Haradrim and Mordor, of course. So it kind of depends on what Khan does. I feel like that's going to be important. Is Khan at war with Harad? Because Harad's moving so many forces toward Khan. No, they're not. Well, I'm not sure what's going on in uh, this part of the world. It's not my concern either, it's so far south. Alright, a ton of buildings done, our economy is looking quite good. Nice. 
Nice, nice, nice. Okay, what shall we get in Burmarling? I feel like a port would be quite nice, but it's rather expensive, so I think I'll get the Mason's Hall first before we build anything. But has got the trading post, so let's get roads. Although roads are also super expensive. They bring in a lot of money, but... Uh, oh my god. I could get the Master Mason's Hall first. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that! Sorry for that. Ba ba ba, Eskaroth. Master Mason's Hall. And Dale, nothing. Burmarling will just have to. Oh, we are building everywhere. Right? Eskaroth. Bukarpus. Grass Guard. No, we're not building a Grass Guard. But we have all the economic, economic buildings here, so that's pretty good. Alright, Mr. Spy, where art thou? Tiudamir. Theudamir. And my diplomat. Yes, my well, they might have yes, taken. Um, Tomorrow's journey what's the cinnamon called again? I shall continue tomorrow. Ah, I forgot. Framsburg? No. The other burg. I can't remember. Am I feeling almost inclined to disband this ship? Oh, I guess we can do some scouting. They don't do much, but then again, 100 upkeep is not going to make a difference. It's literally not doing anything. <laughs> Alright. I'm sure some of you will be super proud that I'm using forts. I know I'm kind of proud of myself right now, lads, I'm not going to lie. Stop bribing me! I don't want it. Go away. I don't want your wine. I've got plenty of old wine. I don't even like wine that much, to be honest. The only wine I like is white wine. Like a German dry wine. Mmm, that's pretty good. But like red wine? Nah. Not my not my thing. Okay. We have sieged Edoras. No, wait, what? We haven't sieged. I thought it said Edoras reached. But Edoras is under siege by, well, probably Isengard. It's the only faction that really has the manpower to do so. As we move towards Goblin Town. Vidus Sintha. Celebrations have broken out throughout the kingdom at the news of a royal birth. Ooh, a royal birth, good. As the ruling family grows, so too does the foundation for a dynasty that will last throughout the ages. Talking about dynasty, I actually haven't taken a look at our family tree yet. So there's King Bard. He died peacefully, well that's good to know. With his wife, Beowyn. And he had a daughter, Sigrid. Who has also died. Oh, she died before him, that's pretty sad. And his wife died like 30 years before him, oh, that's pretty sad. And there's King Bane, his brother Hallward, they are the same age, okay. They're both married, and King Bane has a son, Prince Brand, who also has a son, so the, the lineage is secured there. And he also has a bunch of daughters, and then we of course have Bjorn, son of Hallward, which is a cousin to Prince Brand. A lot of daughters, a lot of daughters. I mean, that's good, don't get me wrong, I'm all for girl power and all that. Alright, so there was grass guard left, right? Let's get the Master Mason to hold that. Spend our cash. Okay. Mr. Spy, I have my eyes set upon this settlement, so I want you to check it out, scope it out. Because I feel like we're gonna attack it sooner rather than later. I've already finished those Athala Rangers, I guess. Yep. 4-4. Four, four. I don't think there's any forts down here. I should send a spy, uh, not a spy, but a general out to plop down some watchtowers, actually. It will cost me some upkeep, but we shall continue tomorrow. it's kind of too important to have watchtowers. I do trust that aboard. I don't think they're going to betray me anytime soon. I think they're physically incapable of betraying me. But, you know, you shouldn't just have blind trust. And I should also put some watchtowers in the corner of Dale so we can keep an eye out on the, the Onazanar region where the Gundabet orcs sometimes like to dwell. But they're probably already busy fighting for Dane's Halls, so that's good for us. Mordor. I think we'll probably face Mordor at one point as well, seeing as usually once the Gulder cripples, Mordor takes over a large part of southern Mirkwood. They're like, hold my beer. Come all if you can't do it yourself, I'll do it for you. Which, of course, at that point, yes. Kamul becomes part of the Mordor With army. This tower will keep Mason's Hall done here. So that does enable us to get the roads at a cheaper price, but it's still too expensive. Let's get the farming outpost. 
Yeah, we were building this entire settlement from nothing. It just had the walls. So that mysterious settlement over here is still in rebel hands. I have no idea where it is. Let's actually check. Is the Golden at war with the Winian? They are, right? Yep. Okay, good. Just something to quickly check. Um, man, we are just breeding like crazy. Holy shit. We we're getting late, so... Oh, I forgot to move my diplomat. Look, there's Radagast. Radagast the Brown. I mean, we are a pretty... Uh, how do you say that? I can't think of the word. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the word, but I can't come up with it. But it basically means we're getting a ton of children. People in Dale get lead, so... If you guys want to come live in my kingdom and have all the sex, <laughs> uh, I'm going to get YouTube strikes for my naughty language. I'm a naughty boy. Alright, Angmar, what are you doing taking so long? Jesus Christ. Don't act like you have some kind of plan. You always get crushed by the Dunedain and by the dwarves. Yes. Alright, Goblin Town. Question, Hello, Gazur. You look like brown Azog. Give me money. I'm kind of curious what unit I will get. I might just disband them straight away because... I don't want to spend it on upkeep. What do I get? Northman Archers. That's a pretty shite unit. How does it compare to these guys? Eh. I think I'll just disband them to be honest. Morian and Windvale, okay. I guess that's what Radagast was doing. Declaring war. What? Alright, Dale. Becoming richer and richer and richer. What shall we get? The Great Market. Plus 350 in building income. My god, that is quite crazy. 661. 702. It's mostly the building income that I like. Horses, wool... Village? What? We're, we're importing villages? <laughs> How does that work? Wine, lumber, gold. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> what to get? What to get? I think we'll get the great market actually. Those buildings are going to rake in the cash. Yes, my lord. There's some more rebel land up here. Let's go scout it out. We might just take that before we move on to Guldur. It would potentially give us some more income. Yeah, I should have plopped down watch towers before, then I would have noticed that earlier. We might have just already sent in a squat to take care of it. Ah oh, well. I never claim to be a pitch perfect player, of course. But I am doing my best, especially for this campaign. I really want to do a good campaign. I often get accused of being too blase, which is true. Not just in the campaign. It's that's the one thing I always remember from high school is teachers calling me blase because <laughs> I pff, I don't always put in as much effort as I should or could or would or wanna but uh, I am doing it for this campaign for the boys all oh, right so did we just get the message that the ring is in goblin town hmm all right wouldn't it be hilarious if we took the ring in like 27 turns and then immediately march towards mortar and just take him out from the early game on, it would so dramatically change the balance of power because then Gondor would probably just sweep everything down south. Alright, where's this settlement? I don't want to cheat, but my god am I inclined to cheat right now just to see what a bloody settlement is. I don't know all these places, man. Alright, Berkaupis. Get a port or something in Eskaroth. I think maybe in Eskaroth would be better. Mason's guild house. Required to build a large city. If I look at the building browser, large city is the biggest I can get. But this is a huge city, so I guess it's like a, a gift I get. Hmm. Are there any special buildings that I need to take into account? Well, a bank would be nice. That's if we get a great market. Is that what I'm building in Dale right now? It is, so then I can get the merchant's bank, and then I can start raking in the big money. Because that does quite... Uh, increased tradable goods, plus 80, plus 100... 
Uh, gosh. So we do have access to merchants, which is quite nice. Uh, let's see, sea trade, we can get docklands, we can get the penultimate dockyard. Trade roads, so the trading plaza is what we really want. With the trading plaza in the town, the region's wealth will skyrocket. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's also something that Galu pointed out. Get these buildings, because apparently they're super good. So we'll keep doing that. Alright, so what do we need for that then? Um... We need the second tier of that first. We can't get that, it seems. Maybe I need to build a fairground first. And then Burkaupis. Um... Uh, whew. Town guard, I guess? Why not? Might as well get it. Might have to train some units there sooner rather than later. Yes, my lord. All right, and then for our diplomat, my lord. I guess we could talk to the Snowhawks. We don't have any issues with them yet. <laughs> We're still at peace with them for now. But who knows for how long. No doubt we'll clash blades at one point. No doubt in my mind. Alright. So I'm inching closer towards the end of our first episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love if you could give the video a like. Because that really gives me some motivation. And that really kind of confirms for me that you guys like what I'm doing. Which is of course very important. For a democratic channel. And this, this first episode is mainly focused of course on the economic rebuild. Which is core gameplay of Dale. That's part of playing Dale. You start out with horrible horrible economy and we do get a guild and we get a very special message for it it looks different than any other message i've gotten before dale is well known for its archers and many take inspiration from the bravery of bard the bowman their archers often grouped together in small bands to share techniques and skills and to capitalize on this king bane established a guild in his father's honor and it helps to spread knowledge and training amongst all the peoples of dale that host a guild hall this guild speeds up the replenishment of all archers within its settlement i mean that's really good and we can't afford it for now so yes Send a message to the High Elves. Ah, uh, you see, that's annoying because I actually can't reach the High Elves in five turns. Because the game doesn't take Goblin Town into account and he thinks I can cross here, which of course I can't. So, what I will do now is move you north to the Orcs of Gunnabed. And if you guys don't mind, I will just teleport the Diplomat to here. Um, that's the only cheating I will do because, of course, it is physically impossible to do this mission. I don't think I can go around the Misty Mountains and talk to the High Elves in five turns. I think that's impossible. Alright, Grass Guard, nothing too interesting there, but Marling, let's get the trading post. We can get those trading buildings in all our settlements, so that's going to bring in a lot of cash. Your orders, my lord. Ah, there, Burgram. Oh, that's a pretty beefy settlement, man, not going to lie. I'd have to bring over some reinforcements. Let's send over an army then to help him out. I feel like this would be enough to take care of these lads. Although, should I send them Prince? You know what, let's send these guys as well. It's gonna cost me a little bit, but we can afford to host an army now, even, you know, just a small one, and then we can take Burkram next episode. So, yeah, that was it for episode one. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I do very much hope to catch you next time. Bye bye!